You're listening to The Back 40, the podcast for Ontario farmers, covering topics and issues that matter most to Ontario agriculture. Brought to you by Trillium Mutual Insurance, bringing the ag community together one podcast at a time. I'm the host of The Back 40, Mike Bryan, agribusiness specialist at Trillium Mutual Insurance. During the pandemic, farmers markets have sometimes been scrambling a little bit uh, when we were initially told that we couldn't go to various places. They were wondering how they were going to manage to set up safely and how they were going to manage to be able to sell their produce. And many of them, of course, rely very heavily on uh, being able to be at those different farmers markets. Some of them went to an online presence. Everybody talked about how new that was. Click Fork is a system that's been in business since before the pandemic, and it's an online farmer's market. We're talking today with Chantal Lewington about the online presence that they've had for several years now. And Chantal, welcome to the Back 40. Thank you, Mike. Okay, so what is Click Fork? So Click Fork is an online farmer's market. It was created uh, about four years ago. It was born out of the need to find a marketing strategy for local farmers who had been previously selling uh, their products through a uh, not-for-profit food co-op that had to close its doors. A group of farmers got together to discuss how they could market their products after that closure. My husband and I, uh, my husband's name is Dave, we uh, had already been doing online sales for our farm for approximately eight years prior to that. So we showed them our website and and how we were doing it. And someone asked, well, why can't we make a website like this for all of us to market our our products together and consumers can can shop in one place and pick everything up at the same time and have it all paid for in one transaction. So that's how ClickFork was born. (laughs) So for our listeners, I'm, I'm located in uh, southern Ontario, but you're a little further north than that, and the distances that are involved there are a little bit larger. What area do you cover? Our farm is located in a little town called Laving, Ontario, close to uh, Lake Nipissing, and we cover the, the two major cities are North Bay and Sudbury. We're pretty much almost in the middle of that, so we're lucky to have two cities close to us. We're about an hour each way to each city. We, we cover pretty much the 100 kilometer radius. Um, there's a few areas that are not as populated that we don't uh, reach, um, but we do some uh, home deliveries and we also do community pickups. So customers come meet us at a central location to, to pick up their orders and there's no charge for that. And I should back up and say that the home deliveries were only added last year when when COVID started to give folks the option who didn't want to leave home. So you've been doing this for quite a while. What's some of the challenges been to getting a system like this up and running? You have to know how to use computers and website software. You have to be pretty tech savvy to make it all work because it's not a simple website for, for just one farm. You have multiple vendors and you need to set up payment uh, options. It just everything has to, to flow properly. So I can't take all the credit for that. I had a, a local web designer help me out to create a website to, to meet my needs. His name is Howie. His, his business is called Crimson Pepper. So if any farmers are interested in making a website, um, look him up because he's, he's awesome. He customized the site for me to make it work the way I wanted So there's a lot involved in that aspect, but also you have to stay connected with your consumers in a different way that you would at a in-person farmer's market. So you have to do a lot of uh, social media marketing and uh, newsletters. And for our social media marketing, we we do uh, little promos called Know Your Farmer posts. We get our each vendor to answer a series of questions about themselves to let consumers learn about them and feel connected to their producers because that's what they want. They want to feel a, a connection. So without the in-person aspect, that's how we try to make up for that and, and make people feel connected and they get to see how their food is uh, is grown or how their their meat is raised and so on. That's a very popular and um, a very useful tool in that aspect. And then the newsletters let people know what's going on and, and what product new products we're adding, if we're adding any new vendors, et cetera. 
How many vendors are involved in this venture? Uh, currently, there's uh, around 30 vendors, or a little bit over that now. <laughs> and, and what different types of products are, are available through ClickFork? So there's a, uh, a wide range. There's uh, fresh produce, frozen produce. We have artisanal and value-added products. We have beef, bison. In terms of dairy, we have uh, like grass-fed cheeses and butters, uh, artisanal cheese, eggs, flour, honey and maple syrup, lamb, pork, poultry, and fish. So we have wild-caught fish, seeds, and plants. I think I've covered everything. <laughs> That's, that's quite a selection yeah. of stuff that people can yeah. get. <clears throat> and what's your contribution to this? What do you produce? Our farm is, is called Delu Farms, and we raise grass-fed, grass-finished beef. We've been uh, at this location for uh, 17 years. My husband is from southern Ontario, so he uh, moved his farm up here before I met him in 2001. And our farm has gone through a lot of transitions over the years. Uh, he started out with just uh, sheep and pigs. And then he started doing a little more direct marketing. And when I came in the picture, we did a lot more direct marketing because I was really interested in that. So currently we do grass-fed, grass-finished beef. And we have three kids who also have their own little enterprises. So my daughter, she's uh, my youngest is nine. She has laying hens. And my 11-year-old daughter has rabbits for meat. And my 13-year-old son has goats for meat. That's a fair selection all on its own there. And I, I'm sure that that uh, keeps you folks busy with uh, with all of the different enterprises that you've go got going on the property there. We also grow some grain crops to make uh, pig feed for uh, other local farmers in the area, just to have a, a rotation in our uh, our fields. So what are some of the logistical uh, issues that you run into with this? If you're coordinating with more than 30 vendors here, obviously there's got to be some way of getting all of the orders together into one spot. How do you, how do you manage that? Uh, yeah, that, it's quite complex. And uh, I should back up and, and tell you the, how we started out. The first year for ClickFork was a, a soft launch just to see how it would work out and if we would gain any traction or if customers would even order from us. There was four farms involved. So there was our farm for the, the beef and then there was a produce farm, Yield Good Farms, and a second produce farm, Three Forks Farms, and they also raised certified organic poultry. And the fourth farm, Kipling Ridge Farms, was pastured pork and some beef as well. So the first year, we pretty much sold out of everything because no one had produced extra for this online farmer's market because we had no idea how it would go. So then the second year, we all made plans to produce more. During the winter, it was discussed that the online farmer's market was a lot of work logistically, a lot of clerical duties. A couple of the producers were thinking of backing out. So my husband and I, we saw a lot of potential in click fork and we didn't want to let it go we proposed to take it over and that i would become the market manager and it would, click fork would become a part of daily farms's business that was probably the best decision we've made because now we have control over uh, which vendors we add uh, we simplify things for the other farms who were already too busy with their farming. We also centralized the packaging of orders because prior to that, each farm was packaging the customer's orders on their own farm and then bringing it to our farm. And then we would deliver like four or five bags to each customer. And it was too much packaging and too complicated. So once I took it over, the packaging became much more condensed because all the products were brought to me here and I was packing the orders. So we're saving a lot on, on packaging, not just for costs, but also for environmental reasons, uh, which our customers are very uh, environmentally conscious. So that's, that's a, a big plus there. And also not having to run ideas by multiple people every time you want to make a change. 
I mean, when I, I make a major change, I will give them a heads up or ask their opinions because they were founding members and we want to continue collaborating with them and, and make sure they're happy with the way we're managing things. And anytime I ask them, they're like, oh yeah, you, you're, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Don't worry about asking us kind of thing. From what I, I hear from the other vendors, they're really happy with the way we're managing things. And also uh, that we are selective with the vendors we add I think is important to them because they want to maintain integrity and make sure that the customers ordering from us are confident in the products that we have available, knowing that they're raised a certain way. We have some some minimum standards or requirements that they have to meet. So that gives the other producers confidence and also gotten a, a lot of feedback from our customers saying that, you know, when I order from ClickFork, I don't have to worry uh, you've done the research for me, so that saves me a lot of time. It, yes, and, and I've talked to other people running other businesses. It's very difficult sometimes to manage them when you have multiple people trying to make the decisions. It's much easier when one person can say, okay, this is the way we're going to do it and implement it without somebody else saying, well, I think we should do it another way. And you, you can end up spending a lot of time and effort discussing that without really getting anywhere with it. Do it one way, do it the other. It's easier just to get it done there. How many customers would you say that you uh, supply? Do you know the number there? Yeah, well, I've, I've got a list of almost 800 customers. They don't all order every time, but consistently we probably get, I would say around 300 orders per month. I mean, there's there's other organizations who get a lot more orders, but considering the our geographical uh, area, I think that's pretty good because people are a lot more spread out here than they are in, let's say, ter- the Toronto area. Yeah, there, there's quite the distance to to have to cover, and it's one of the things that because of those distances, it, it makes something like this much more appealing to people than to have to drive for quite a distance to get to a farmer's market only to find that. You were too late. Everything was sold out on that. How often do you deliver to the various locations? In the summer, or I guess starting in June and up until Christmas, we do biweekly deliveries. And then after Christmas, we tone it down to once a month, just because there's, there's less availability of fresh produce. And it also gives us a break because as farmers, we kind of like to, to catch up on, on rest and, and other family things in the winter. And it also lets us get organized for the, the upcoming season and um, to work on other projects. Do you like what you're hearing from the Back 40? We'd like to hear from you. Send us an email with your comments and thoughts to theback40 at trillionmutual.com or follow us on social media at Trillium Mutual. there's a lot of work involved and I know you talk to people at the market a lot of them for you know on an in-person basis they talk about picking produce by flashlight at four o'clock in the morning and and getting that ready to go I mean there's quite a commitment there during the summer to get all of this produce and all of the product that you offer to get them picked and to a spot now you've got a little more flexibility here because of the fact that you're delivering them but there's still quite a bit of effort involved in that are you personally delivering or do you just let somebody else look after that i personally uh, deliver pretty much every uh, order because just the nature of the business it's we're growing and we do have a one full-time employee now and a a part-time one However, I still want to be very hands-on with the business because I want to see our customers. I want to be involved that way. I just feel that that's the most rewarding part of this is to, to meet the people that you're providing this service to. I don't have plans to stop delivering because, like I said, that's my favorite part. With farmers markets, a lot of the draw for people is to get to know the different vendors that are there. That's a bit of a more of an issue when you're doing it online. But that idea that you're delivering all there, I mean, certainly that helps you get to know who your customers are there. Yes, and I think the, the fact that I'm also a farmer is, is very, I wouldn't say comforting, but it's an added uh, little perk for them to, to meet one of their farmers and see that she's also a busy mom and, and managing this online farmer's market. And then my husband will do home deliveries. So in the winter time, in the spring. So I've had a few people tell me like, oh, 
Farmer Dave is delivering to me personally. That's so awesome. And <laughs> <laughs> but but people want to know who who actually produced that food. They they really do. That's part of the appeal of local food. Is okay. Yes, there's somebody there that's selling at the farmers market, or in your case, there's somebody that's delivering it. But they do more than just deliver it. They actually produced some of that food that they're getting. Yes, it, it's nice to for us to meet them as well to put a face on on these people because it, it kind of gives us a boost or a, a reason to continue doing the hard work that we're doing and it's very rewarding to see how people appreciate it and I often get people thanking me for for doing all this work I've had customers give me cards gift cards and money just like at Christmas time thanking me for for all the the hard work I'm doing so that's that's always nice <laughs> it's a different situation like we, my wife and I go every Saturday morning to a local farmer's market and we see the same vendors and they've many of them been there year after year and it's it's great to talk to them and my wife likes to talk to people and and likes to to make friends with them but that's part of the appeal of, of going there and in your situation it's that's part of the appeal of the local far- food is that they're showing you're showing up with food for them and they do appreciate that and and in your case where the distances are involved that's got to mean something that that somebody would take the time to make sure that they had access to it for sure yeah now during covid during the pandemic you uh made a change there where you said that you had uh, started doing home deliveries for some people that didn't want to be out uh, and about as much how's that gone uh, it's going well. I mean, uh, the service is maybe not being used as much as it was right in the beginning, but I, I think it's it's convenient for a lot of people. They got in the habit of getting a home delivery for super busy families. To them, it's worth paying. There is a delivery fee when you get a home delivery. It's it's worth it to them to pay the fee. And I mean, we're not charging crazy prices. We're just charging enough to, to cover our uh, our mileage and our time to do that. So yeah, I think it's, it's definitely helping. And uh, you mentioned mentioned COVID again. And I have to say that our sales did increase um, substantially once COVID started. But I don't want to attribute all the success to to COVID because (laughs) I just feel like I hear a lot about due to COVID, this has happened or due to COVID, we can't do this anymore. So I I like to take the credit myself a little bit and and say that that my hard work uh, over the year, the last few years is really paying off. Our advertising costs are super low because we get a lot of uh, customers through word of mouth and just happy customers. So in many situations where where markets have gone online or, or businesses have gone online, they can attribute that directly. But for your situation, you know, you've been doing this for a while and this is not an overnight success. This is something that you've you've been working at for for several years before we ever saw the pandemic there. It just you were in the right place to be able to take advantage of it, perhaps. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So where do you see Click Fork going? What's in the future for that? And do you have any other projects that you're working on? Yeah, so uh, I guess my goal is to, to continue to provide this service and for the long term to someday pass it on to maybe my children. Or if they don't want to do this, then uh, someone else who would be uh, young and keen and interested in continuing on. So I, I think Click Fork is here to stay. Uh, so as, so long as consumers continue to support us and I do not want to become a huge multinational business obviously because that's not even close to what we're all about I, I'm happy that we're able to hire a, a local full-time person one project that I have been working on to add is a licensed kitchen in order to preserve like in-season produce and make more value-added products uh, with any excess produce or uh, meats that we we have in excess, just to add more variety for our customers. And I think that adds a lot of value for our vendors as well, because if they have a huge bumper crop of a certain thing one season, then we can take that and process it instead of seeing it go to waste. So we we actually asked for investments from our customers to get this this project going, and uh, we've had great amount of of support from our customers and and uptake. So we've been able to, to buy a lot of equipment and start installing that. So that's that's ongoing, and we're hoping to get that up and running before the huge uh, bulk of produce is ready, like in August. 
And we also want to add some, some other programs such as a composting program for people who don't have uh, backyard composting. Uh, we'd like to, to take our customers compost, bring it to the farm and, and make some nutrients for our farm with it. It's circular. You provide them with the produce, they provide you with the, with the composting materials afterwards. And it kind of fits because you are in a situation where you're delivering. It's a great opportunity to bring that back again. Exactly. Yeah. What sort of products are, are your customers asking for? Obviously, if they've been willing to invest in this, there's a demand there. And what sort of products are they looking for out of this uh, out of this new venture? I, I actually haven't had any specific uh, requests. Uh, <laughs> I think they're just, they're just they've been happy with uh, the services we provided to them throughout the years, and I, I have a loyal customer base who. When I come up with these ideas, they just uh, jump on a board because it's not the first program we've done. We've also done a cow share program for our, our own uh, beef operation. So we have just over 30 customers who have invested in our cow herd. In return, they get beef every year. So it's a five-year investment. And every year they get uh, $100 off their their beef order so they give us five hundred dollars and then they get it back over five years and they also get a discount on their freezer order and they're guaranteed to get a, a quarter beef every year for five years because some years we will sell out quickly mm -hmm. uh, it's actually our 12th year doing that that cow share program so we have a lot of loyal customers like i said and uh, when i ran this kitchen idea by them i think they had confidence because they had already done other programs with us and not worried that their money is going to disappear so with the kitchen investment they get a gift certificate to use on our website so they they get their money back in food they're just pre-investing yeah, and, exactly. and they're they're used to this concept. Yeah, that's a different layer than uh, than what you see in a lot of uh, in a lot of operations. That you use your customers to help you provide them with products that they're looking for, and they're obviously they're willing to invest in you because you said like in this new venture, they're not even looking for a specific product. They're just looking to see what you come up with and they think that it's going to be good for them right yeah and i think they want they want to support the local agriculture and and business so uh, i think it's a perfect opportunity for them because they get their money back eventually in food and and that's uh like you said it's a, a circle that's a kind of a higher level investment we also have one that's a little bit uh, more affordable for for people who can't put that much money up front it's just a, a membership with quick fork so it's a hundred dollar membership and then they get a, a discount on their orders so if someone can't help us with the kitchen investment they can still get the membership and it, it still helps us develop the kitchen and other programs like the composting idea we have that gives you a little bit of working capital up front, but it also builds customer loyalty, right? I mean, if you're yes. willing to, if you're willing to pay for a membership, you're obviously going to use the service. There's, there's, yeah. there's no two ways about that. And I know I sure would, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't invest in something that I wasn't happy with. Is there anything else that you've got planned other than the kitchen? No major projects, but uh, another program we've implemented is a bin program. So we have customers buy reusable bins. So they buy a set of bins and then every time they pick up their order, we hand them the full bin and they give us an empty bin back. And that way we don't have to use any packaging, which is convenient because they don't have to, to wait till we go find this bag in that bag because there's fresh products, there's frozen products, there's dry products. We just hand them their bin and away they go in the winter. That's very handy when it's minus 30 up here. And it's, it's also very environmentally friendly that way. Now you, you said you, you'll have in the same order, you'll have a dry product or a room temperature type product. You'll have a cold product and you'll have a frozen product. What's the logistics like of trying to keep that all separate? How do you keep the frozen frozen while you still have other stuff that you don't want to get frozen? What we do is we have an enclosed trailer that we pull to the delivery sites. We have chest freezers in there. So we keep all the frozen items packaged together and we keep them in the, the freezers until we get there. And then we have uh, blue Rubbermaid bins for refrigerated and 
we will mix the refrigerated and dry products because the the dry products doesn't matter if they're they're cold or not yeah um so then we have a pick list at the uh the pickup location and then we have the customer's name and we know we need to find one frozen and one refrigerated for them and then for the home deliveries it's a little different we have uh insulated bags for do for the frozen products sometimes if we have too many orders i will have to bring some of them with me in the enclosed trailer and my husband will have to come refill the wrap we use a, a wrap to do the home deliveries uh, you know that's a good problem to have though it's it's good to have lots of orders and lots of customers there so you sound like you're fairly busy with everything you've got going on running a farm running a family that's not your only job that you have is it i also have a part-time job as an x-ray technologist however i am uh taking a lot less shifts since I started managing Click4. I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> it allows me to work from home more and be around the kids because we are actually homeschooling all three kids. My 13-year-old son was already homeschooling before COVID started. And then once COVID hit, we were already considering switching the girls to homeschool, but we just made the leap a little sooner. So all three of them are, are homeschooled and not in the school system any longer. So if people want to find out more about Click Fork and they're within your 100, a or your 100 kilometer radius there, how do they find out uh, and how do they become customers? Uh, so it's pretty simple. They just go to clickfork.ca and they can find all the information there. We also have a delivery and pickup schedule posted on our website so they can see it's a Google calendar where they can see uh, the dates we're delivering and to which locations. So all the info is there. They don't have to be a member to place an order. Anyone can go ahead, place their order, pay online, and then all the uh, information is also sent to them in a confirmation email with their uh, delivery date and time. But one common mistake consumers make is they forget to select if they want community pickup or uh, home delivery. So the default is home delivery. So if you don't select that community pickup, you'll get charged a delivery fee. They just have to make sure to, to, to choose the community pickup if they want to come meet us to get their order. That's awesome. This is a, a great project. It's a great business model. I love the idea of uh, a farmer's market online. We've been talking to Chantal Lewington from ClickFork, the online farmer's market. Thank you, Mike. Join us next time when our guest will be Amy Peck from the Canadian Cattlemen's Association. Amy has been heavily involved in the production of a short film called Guardians of the Grassland. The documentary examines the relationship between grazing cattle and the preservation of a unique ecosystem within Canada. You've been listening to The Back 40. Brought to you by Trillium Mutual Insurance. Be sure to subscribe to The Back 40 wherever you find your favorite podcasts so that you don't miss an episode. The Back 40, bringing the ag community together one podcast at a time. I'm Mike Brine. Until next time, take care and stay safe.